story time. There's a Dragon in My Cupboard by John F. Green, illustrated by Linda Hendry. Read for you today by me, Mrs. Dawn. Jonathan Longfellow McGee awoke one morning and found a dragon in his cupboard. It wasn't one of those slimy little green lizards with red forked tongues that you find in a pet shop either. It hardly. This dragon was huge. It was sitting all scrunched up, its long tail wrapped around its neck three times just so that it could fit in the cupboard. It was covered with silver scales that curled up like sardine lids. Spiky whiskers stuck out from its broad green snout, where two nostrils perched like twin railway tunnels at the side of a loud, large mountain. Unhappy eyes peered out at Jonathan. Hey, how did you get in there? asked Jonathan. The dragon looked embarrassed. Uh, I'm not too sure. I was chasing a knight through the forest when he disappeared around a corner. I was going so fast I couldn't stop and I suppose I skidded off the page. The next thing I knew I was folded up inside this cupboard. Hmm, Jonathan said thoughtfully. It must have been that book that I brought home from the library about knights and dragons. Maybe you better find a different place to keep your book, said the dragon. It's a bit crowded in here. Got any ideas how I can get back where I came from? I sure could use my nice roomy cave. Hmm, let me work on it, said Jonathan. He closed the door, then he opened it again. By the way, he asked, do you breathe fire? Only when I sneeze, said the dragon, and I only do that when I'm nervous. Oh, said Jonathan. He closed the door again very carefully and went downstairs. Jonathan's mother was in the kitchen. Mum, he said quietly, there's a dragon in my cupboard. Of course, dear. Now eat your toast or you'll be late for school. Jonathan's father was in the study. There's a dragon in my cupboard, father, he said politely. Not now, son. I'm late for a meeting. Jonathan's big brother was in the hall getting his books ready for school. Guess what, said Jonathan. There's a dragon in my cupboard. <laughs> Don't be silly, laughed his brother. Jonathan's baby sister was under the piano stool in the living room playing with the dog. When he told her about the dragon, she said, As he left for school, Jonathan met the postwoman coming down the road. Hi, Jonathan, what's new? She greeted him. There's a dragon in my cupboard, he answered eagerly. Yeah, and I've got Moby Dick in the bath, said the postwoman, slapping her leg with glee. At the house next door, the delivery boy from the market was ringing the doorbell. Hey, Jonathan yelled across the hedge. There's a dragon in my cupboard. The delivery boy raised one eyebrow, <coughs> wiped his nose on his sleeve and said, Hoof. Things didn't go much better at school. Oh, sure, said one friend when Jonathan told him the news. Yeah, fat chance, said another. One shrugged. One sniggered, one doubled over laughing. No one believed him. At break, Jonathan asked the teacher if he could speak to him privately. Oh, of course, Jonathan. What would you like to talk to me about? Well, said Jonathan carefully, when I got up this morning, there was a dragon in my cupboard. How exciting, said the teacher. The problem is, Jonathan continued, nobody believes me. You must admit, his teacher said, that a dragon is a strange thing to find in a cupboard. He winked at Jonathan. What do you think I should do about it, said Jonathan. <clears throat> his teacher coughed politely. Maybe you should take another look. Maybe you just imagined that you saw a dragon. After school, Jonathan hurried home as fast as he could. He burst through the front door, bounded up the stairs to his room, took a deep breath, yanked open the cupboard door and... The dragon was still there. 
Yeah, I'm still here, Ugh, replied the dragon crossly. Ooh, you must be hungry, said Jonathan. What do dragons eat for dinner? Mmm, toads, snails, worms, bats. Never mind, Jonathan interrupted. I'll bring you a cheese and pickle sandwich. After he had fed the dragon, Jonathan sat down at his desk, took out some paper and a pen, and this is what he wrote. Jonathan Longfellow McGee cordially invites you to attend a dragon showing at 4pm today in his bedroom. Please be prompt. He wrote the same invitation over and over again. Then before he went to bed, he checked one more time to see if there really was a dragon in his cupboard. The next morning, Jonathan gave an invitation to his mother who said, Oh, how delightful, Jonathan. Of course I'll be there. He gave one to his father who said, Very clever, son. You can count on me. He gave one to his big brother who stuffed it into his back pocket without even looking at it. He gave one to his baby sister who chewed on it happily for the rest of the morning. On the way to school, he gave one to the postwoman and another to the delivery boy. Imagine that, said the postwoman to the delivery boy. That kid really believes that he's got a dragon in his cupboard. He gave one to each of his friends and at break, he handed the last one to his teacher. It's still there, he whispered. Really? His teacher whispered back. Well, I'll certainly be there to see it. Promptly, at four o'clock, Jonathan led everyone upstairs to his bedroom. First came his mother carrying his baby sister in, his arm, in her arms. Then his father followed closely behind. Then the postwoman, the delivery boy, his big brother and his teacher. Two of his friends from school were there and a couple of kids from his baseball team who were very curious about what was going on. As soon as they all squeezed into the room, Jonathan walked over and opened the cupboard door. I told you, he announced proudly, there's a dragon in my cupboard. Everyone stared at the dragon. The dragon stared back nervously. His whiskers itched, his nostrils twitched, and suddenly, ah, tissue, it sneezed. A bright flame shot out across the room. Coat hangers flew, trousers, shirts, socks sailed through the air like kites on string and the cupboard doorknob shot across the room and stuck into the wall beside the window. The delivery boy and Jonathan's teacher raced down the hall and locked themselves in the toilet. Jonathan's father jumped through the bedroom window onto the porch roof and slid down the guttering. The kids were right behind him. His mother fainted. His big brother tried to climb onto one of the dressing table drawers and his baby sister was, went sailing under the bed and the postwoman leapt straight up into the air. Jumping toadstools, she yelled. That kid's got a dragon in his cupboard. The force of the sneeze knocked the dragon out of the cupboard right on top of Jonathan. They looked at each other and smiled as they lay together under a jumbled heap of clothing. Then Jonathan spied the book that he'd borrowed from the library sticking out from under the dragon's tail. He picked it up and held it under his friend's still smoking snout. Here's your book, he said, an illustrated history of ferocious dragons. Do you think you could find a good place for me in there? asked the dragon wistfully. Jonathan opened the book to a large picture of a beautiful green forest. How about this, he said. Mm, I think that looks like a great place for a dragon. Delightful, exclaimed the dragon. He climbed up onto Jonathan's bed. Now, hold the book still. I'm going to do a swan dive. Jonathan held the book out at arm's length. I'll miss you, he said sadly. Me too, but I don't belong here. I'm homesick. Goodbye. 
and in the next instant the dragon had disappeared between the fluttering pages of Jonathan's book. One morning, a few days later, Jonathan turned to his father at breakfast time. Father, he said quietly but firmly, there's a one-eyed giant in the spare room. 